Hi, my name is Ollie, and in case you don't know, I'm a huge Eminem fan. I also like to collect vinyl records. And when you put those two things together, you end up with a little bit of a collection. Now, considering the fact Eminem has made 11 studio albums, two compilation albums, two soundtrack albums, two collaborative albums, and three box sets, which all adds up to 21 in total albums, I appear to have 23 in my actual collection. There is a lot for me to get through in this video, so before I get any further, please subscribe if you want to see more of my vinyl collection, leave a like if you like Eminem, and let me know in the comments what Eminem records you have in your collection. So starting out with the very first album of his, the Slim Shady LP. This is fairly plain and simple. Literally, you just got the front cover there, and you've got the back there, and then just two black records hang on. They literally just look like this, and nothing too crazy about it. Which I would kind of say goes against the whole concept of this album in terms of being crazy, especially when he's got his dead wife there in the cover. Yeah. One thing I do want to say is if you do want to see my full opinions on each album, go and check out my Eminem tier list because I'm not going to have enough time in this video to give all my thoughts on every record that I'm going to show you. Let's keep going with the second album, Eminem, The Martian Mathers LP. Whatever the term for these ones that don't open up are, that are just a plain box, that's what these first two ones are. This was probably one of the, like, I'd say it was in like the first five Eminem records that I got on vinyl, so it was definitely one that like when I listened to I was addicted to. And one thing I think is important for me to like say about this when it comes to me and my love for Eminem, I got into him in 2017, end of 16 into 17, and that was when I really discovered hip hop. Before that time I was very much into heavy metal, and when it came to me discovering Eminem, I basically spent about two years just listening to Eminem. And it took me a while to discover, I think it was Kendrick Lamar, which really then opened me up to the rest of the hip hop world. And what this meant was I would basically go month to month. It's not like I just listened to every album of his within a span of one month. I would find one or two of the albums and then just go back and forth between them for around about a month or two at a time, and then switch to discovering a new one of his and then listen to that for the same amount of time. And this one was one of the first ones I was really addicted to listening to. It's seen as one of his classic albums, it's seen as just a classic album in general, and rightfully so. Purpley catches the early 2000s of an, an album, and definitely one of the ones that I'm most happy to have in the collection of his. And moving on to his third, and this is like kind of the trilogy that I think everyone thinks of when they think of Eminem. You have Slim Shady LP, you have Marshall Mathers LP, and then you also have the Eminem show. And this is actually the first record that comes with an insert. This is the insert, and this one's actually a pretty cool one, because one of the things I like about it is not only does it open up, but it's not just got the credits to each song on the front there, this whole section, this does have all the credits to every song. But when you actually look at it, you can go through the entire album and you can read every verse and every lyric that is written for each song. And I really love that as an aspect to this, and obviously you also have some imagery on there from like some of the shoots they did for the album. Very cool nonetheless, and then having a look at the records themselves. Simple and black, got the Eminem show cover on there with curtains gone and without him, I guess. Then we have Encore, and if you want to know my opinion on this as a vinyl record, I actually really like it. I really love some of the photography within it, and I love the just like style and vibe of the whole thing, of being like, end of the show, going out on top type vibe. And like on the right side of the inside of the gatefold, it tells a very clear story through, I think, 18 images, and I absolutely love that for this record. However, when it comes to the music on this album, I've got to say, it doesn't do it for me. This, in my opinion, is Eminem's worst album, in my opinion. I know there's a lot of songs on here that people would like, and I think some people even argue it's a classic, but it's, it doesn't do it for me. This is simply one that I wanted just to be part of my collection. Now, the next one that I'm about to show you is actually really special to me because of not just the Eminem collection of my vinyl records, but also just for the whole vinyl collection I've got. Because this, the Eminem Curtain Call album, this is the first record I ever got. Or at least it was the first one that fully started my collection. And I actually didn't buy it myself. I, I don't know why, but like, I've got a terrible memory, but I can literally remember picking this up in HMV. I can remember exactly who I was with, almost not word for word conversation, but I can vaguely remember the conversation we had. And I feel like he must have picked it up for me as like a late birthday present type thing, but he basically saw that I was looking at this and was like, yo, do you want me to get it? And he did. And for that reason, this is a bit more special to me in terms of me holding this particular version of the record. Like if I then went out and brought like a different version of the current call, it wouldn't be as meaningful as me having this one. But anyway, looking at the record, you got some pictures on the left there, which basically just sort of show like the early days of his career slash like the highlights of them, I guess, from 
the Slim Shady LP all the way to the Eminem show slash Encore, I guess. And I really love this image here, which I believe is kind of taken from 8 Mile, which I think actually might be in the wrong order. I think the 8 Mile soundtrack must come before this, because obviously this has Lose Yourself on it. But we'll stick with it, we'll stick with it. Obviously you have all the tracks on the back of it with the roses by his feet, because obviously it's a bit of a curtain call. And one of the things about this album in general is, one, if someone who was approaching me was like asking me, I want to get into Eminem, want to listen to his music, what album would you recommend? Even though this isn't exactly a studio album, it's more of a compilation. I would definitely tell them to start with this one because I think it has some of his best stuff. It's got some original stuff on there as well with stuff like When I'm Gone. Honestly, probably one of his best songs. And it kind of gives you an idea of the kind of character that Eminem is. But not only that, this would be one of the vinyl records I would suggest people start with themselves. Obviously, it was where I started with collecting, but I think in general, it's just a nice one to have. You get like some really good imagery within it. There's nothing particularly special about the records. Again, it's just plain and black. But overall, it's a really nice package vinyl record that I think is a nice first edition for anyone into rap and hip-hop or just music in general because I think everyone has a soft spot for some of the old Eminem stuff. So yeah, this one has a bit more of a cherished memory for me in terms of having it in the collection. So moving on to the 8 Mile soundtrack, which actually may have been before Curtain Call 1, and I'm not really going to talk too much about it. This was actually one of my later additions into the collection. 8 Mile's film, Absolutely Love, one of my favourite films of all time. The soundtrack, it is a good soundtrack. I'll be honest, I haven't listened to all of the songs on there, but obviously the main reason that this is a thing is because of Lose Yourself. One of the best songs of all time, especially one of the best rap songs of all time. And this was actually one of my later additions to my Eminem collection. As I kind of said, it's not really a soundtrack I've taken the time to listen to. It's not really like an Eminem album that I'm going to go and listen to in his discography. The music on there is good, but it's just not something I ever really took time out to listen to. Therefore, it wasn't one that I was always like, I need to get this record, but... Due to it being a part of Eminem's discography, it's one that I wanted to add to the collection. And I'll just throw this in here as well. I do have a like limited edition 8 mile still but box set kind of thing. If you want to see what's in that, go check out this video here. I did a video ages ago on it. So that's 8 mile. We will come back to that. But next up is honestly, this is one of my favourites. From a music aspect and from a record aspect as well, looking at it. But that is Eminem with Relapse. I believe this might be the only edition of the Relapse album. Trust me, if there were others, I would go on my way to get them. And I'll talk about it again when I look at the Marshmallows LP 2 10th Anniversary Edition, but we'll stick on this one for now. As messed up as the music on here is, which is all on the back and whatnot in terms of all the tracks, as messed up as all the songs are on it, I love the storytelling and I love just like how messed up they are. I'm sure there are like horrorcore albums out there that go much further than where this album goes, but like this album as a whole feels kind of like if you were to look at films and movies, but I basically consider this album to be Eminem's horror film of projects, if that makes sense. And I think some people might even be willing to say this is almost as close as we'll get to like a Slim Shady LP 2. And I know some people aren't a fan of the accents, but this album is one that ironically I was hooked to and probably my most replayed album of Eminem. And then if we look on the inside, you've got him dressed as the Joker, very relevant to 2009, especially considering the uh dark knight rises i think it's that one but like in case you can't tell like the whole style of like this like at first it can look like boring on this side the whole point of this is it's supposed to look like a prescription letter or whatever the fuck you call it and i think that's more shown on the back of it but this is kind of like looking at the bottle and like what's all the, all the labels on it that's kind of like the whole point of it and then it's all like supposed to be documentation related to eminem's like whole addiction that he went through there's no insert with this one again it's very much just a simple black record however i do quite like this because the top is supposed to like be a medicine bottle where you have to kind of like do the whole push down thing so it basically says push down and turn but i quite like that as an addition to these records i think out of all of eminem's albums and even just records relapse just stands out as its own thing and because of that some people hate it some people love it i'm one of the people who love it so that was record number seven now Going on to another one of my favourites, Recovery. This would probably be the second record I probably added to my collection. And it's been a while since I've opened and had a look at it. But I remember why this was one of my favourites. Music on there, I love. But in terms of like how this all looks, I just find it like there's a really clean aspect to it. And kind of like when you compare, say, Recovery and Relapse, like they're supposed to be two completely different things. Like this is supposed to be completely mental going insane. I'm gonna be holding this, making something probably cringe at how I'm holding. Whereas this one is supposed to be just like 
really clean, refreshing, and I just get that whole vibe from this entire album, from the photography to just how it's laid out. And I think that's probably one of my favorite things about records in general. I, as much as I love them for the music, I love having a physical version of the album because at the end of the day it's artwork and I feel like that artwork tells me a lot more about the vibe of the music more than anything. Obviously that's not me like disregarding the music at all but these two go together really well from like how messed up and insane he is on this because obviously he's relapsing, he's on drugs. Whereas Recovery, he's getting back to his normal life and trying to recover. Could not think of any other words that I could use there. This one's one of my favourite records I've got. Got some good memories of it was probably like actually one of the reasons I got into Eminem because of the songs on there. I also really do like the back of the album as well. There's so much good stuff on this album. Honestly, it was one of, it was probably the first Eminem album I went for after the compilation of Kurt and Cole. Got a lot of love for it. And then we're moving on to Marshmallow's LP2. I think this is actually a pretty decent sequel and I think it does justice slash like, actually that's a better way to describe this. This is a bit of a fanfare album. If you are picking this up as like a non Eminem fan and you're just like listening to it for the first time, you'll get some good stuff on there and some stuff that'll make you go, wow, this guy's really good. Like say Survival, Rap God, The Monster and Berserk. I'd say those kind of go together as kind of those like mainstream songs. Whereas I think all the other songs to people who are just listening, they're kind of like meh, whatever. But if you're an Eminem fan, I think you really appreciate for what they do because they're kind of just paying homage to all the early stuff that he did mainly back in the Marshmallows LP slash them shady LP era. Because bad guy, I'm not sure if this is going to be news to any of you who are watching this video because you're all probably just as much Eminem fans as me. Bad guy is a sequel to Stan and it did take me a few listens when I was first listening to the album to realize that. And then I can't remember a load of different re references but I know Rap God has a couple of them like the six minutes Slim Shady you're on. There's, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here that you can probably find a breakdown of somewhere else on YouTube. I'm not the place to be doing that. But anyway to the record, it's cool. Yeah, um, I do always like Eminem's albums. I'm just sort of like looking in this, as I'm like kind of like looking at them back to back now. I do really appreciate how these always come together, like especially in like how you open the gatefold record, especially with the photography you get and whatnot. I do just kind of wish there was some more inserts sometimes. What do you get on these records? Yeah, uh, this one's quite a boring one. I mean, that side is, and that side's pretty all right. I think that's kind of like a Detroit related thing on there. Stop focusing on me, focus on that. Other side of it though, bit boring. This isn't one of the records I really hold up like too dearly in my collection. It's kind of, if I'm honest, like I do just kind of say it's a bit there, but it's one obviously, it's an Eminem album, it's got a record I've got added to the collection. Not to say it's a bad album either, I do actually like it and get a lot of replay value out of it, but it's not one I can go back to a lot. So this one, I can only show you so much of it. Um, this is Some Shady YXV. No. Are you stupid? Yes, yes you are. Shady XV, and as you can see, there's a lot of reflection of it because I've kept the wrapping on this one. I don't tend to really keep the wrapping on things, but I think what I came to the conclusion of with this one is like, I don't really have a reason to listen to all the albums or listen to all the songs on here, sorry. And I'd rather keep this as a bit more of a collection making record, if that makes sense. Something to, I think this is where my collection starts to get a bit more unique because I don't think there are a lot of people who would really have this in their collection. And also when it comes to the kind of bigger, bulkier ones like this, it's hard to find covers or protective sleeves to actually put them in. So keeping it in the wrap is quite a nice thing for me to do. There is one song on here that I really do love. That's it, Guts Over Fear featuring Sia. That is an absolute banger and probably one a lot of people haven't heard of. Go back and listen to that song if you haven't, really recommend it. So that's Shady XV, and then we have probably, this is probably the cheapest pickup for this type of album I have ever got. Revival. Now I think at full retail price this was like, I'm gonna say 25 to 30 pound, maybe more. I got this for 10 quid, and I know I'm not the only person, I cannot remember who did, I apologize that I've forgotten your name, but there's someone else whose video I came across on YouTube and they had um, Revival and they said they got it for like $5. So this is one where I think a lot of like major record stores saw it wasn't selling, brought down the price because no one was really a big fan of this album. When it comes to my thoughts on this album, it's a meh, it's a mid album. I'm not saying it's bad because if anyone else produced this thing, it would be considered a classic, I think. But because this Eminem and his standard is so high, it just didn't meet the expectation and the standards he should have met when he re when he released it. Actually, that's something for me to mention about this record because I didn't get it on release or anything, but I had become a fan of Eminem after the Marshmallows LP2 era 
at, even after the Shady XV release. And it took me a few years to discover Shady XV as well. But when it came to Revival, this was my first Eminem album being released that I was a fan of Eminem, if that makes sense. So prior to the Revival releasing, I hadn't been aware of Eminem albums releasing or being like waiting for them because by the time Marshmallow's LP 2 came out, I would have been 12. And I know there are a lot of people my age who probably were listening to him at that point and a bit younger, but at that point with music, I hadn't really like, I didn't have like a passion or thing for music at that point. I think I was only just developing my like love for rock and metal. So I was really excited when this album was being released. However, it was a bit of a disappointment. I'll be honest, I was probably a bit of an Eminem dick rider at that time, being a 17 year old, not being able to think for himself, but I got some, enjoyment out of this album when I listen to it back now. I think Castle and In Your Head, is it Castle? No. Castle and Arouse, those are the two songs that I think are most underrated on this project. And from a record sense, I I don't know what it is. Like, looking at it now, it doesn't stand out as much as the others do. And I know there's not too much difference. Like, yeah, sure, sure, this is a cool bit of photography, but overall I don't find anything particularly special about how this LP looks or anything particularly special about the music. And that's all I've really got to say about it. But then we come to the Kamikaze, and this one is actually a limited edition version, our first of the limited edition Eminem stuff. Because if we open this one up, and also this is actually a gatefold. This is one of the weirder things I did find about this because it's only got one record because it is only 13 quick songs, I'd say, in the majority. We basically get this side, which has all the like credits and songs on there. And then you have this side, which is a bit more artworky of the plane being crashed afterwards, or the wreckage of the plane there. And I think this one is like, now I'm looking through the records, this one's completely different from all the rest when you look at them, because this is literally just artwork and credits. And I think that also kind of speaks to the album itself as to being kind of different like I would almost treat this one more like an EP than I would an album because it's just Eminem like doing what he does best dissing people and causing shit as I like to say so I think how the artwork is within this one I think it kind of speaks to what the album's doing and being different obviously it's paying homage to the Beastie Boys album but now let's get to the more limited edition aspect of this which is that's not the side I open it that's a ripped side the camo red vinyl record now i'm feeling this this is a lot more like a picture disc which makes a lot more sense but as you see it's all full of camo you got the side a there and you got the side b there kamikaze would have been the first proper album that eminem released where i was then like properly looking for the releases what was on eminem shop i even got some merch of it i think i might have a video here somewhere about it this is pretty cool i really do like it as an album itself it's awesome. And for me, being able to experience an Eminem album, getting talked about like more positively, felt nice as an Eminem fan for my first proper time being able to be there for a release. And now that brings me to technically his latest released album, which is Music To Be Murdered by released in 2020. And this should stand out as looking different to what the album cover looks like. If I throw this there, hi, here's me, I'm about to be covered up. These are the differences between the two albums. So this was a limited edition release. I think it was exclusive to the Eminem store when you pre-ordered. You basically get a different cover to this record than what was on streaming. Whereas other produced versions of the album that were sold anywhere else outside the Eminem store, I believe have, a, have basically the same cover as the streaming version. I think that's right. I could be completely off, but I'm, that's what I remember from this release. And I think I have a kind of nice way to describe this album, which is it's almost like Relapse, but elegant. An elegant version of Relapse is how I would describe music to be murdered by. I do really like the layout of this again. It kind of goes back to the similar style prior to Kamikaze. So it kind of links back into all the others that are released, but four images from the shoots that he did there, and then credits there, and also with the nice sort of drawing of Eminem in the kind of murdered by style. I don't know how to describe it. But yeah, it's got that Alfred Hitchcock type vibe about it, obviously, because that's what really inspired the release of this. I think I even remember Eminem releasing a video of like when this album was being released. Although that might have been side B, I can't remember. It's been a while since I've looked at these ones. I can't remember, but I think it's a blood splatter effect. And we shall have a look, because these are different colored what you regularly get and this is actually quite a bloody one but that's to me what a proper blood splatter would be like so the record itself definitely capturing the vibe of the album quite well i, I always say this when i look at all my colored records but this might be my favorite <laughs> i don't know it looks more pink on video right now but 
It's very red and got... Yeah. It's very nice. And now we're kind of starting to get into the whole like limited edition stuff and like unique Eminem records in the collection of mine. And I wasn't sure if I would put this one in that category, but this is Music To Be Murdered By Side B. And this one is a bit more of a chunkier one because I think you have four different records in there. Cause obviously there's a lot more music to include on there, but also you can kind of go back and have a look at the difference between them. There's not too much, the kind of left side is the same, you just have more information put on the here and you're always left with just two images, which I don't think are included in the first record, which is nice to see some difference there, but there's not too much going on on the insert of things, but then when we look at the records, these are limited, but I don't think they're as cool as the first music to be made by side A. Because whereas that had a splatter, this is just plain and simple red which is a, is a nice bright red and obviously it's different to the other one but I think I prefer the other one because there's a bit more going on to it if that makes sense. On the front you have the Music Be Submerged by E logo and then on the other side that's where you have like what's on each side of this. So that's Eminem Music To Be Murdered by Side B. I don't know if there's an exclusive thing of this being the streaming thing either, it might be, but that's another cool one to add. And then we're up to his most latest release, which is Eminem Curtain Call. And this one is another limited edition thing. Uh, it's also probably the first Eminem one where I've done this, where I've actually included the sticker on the protective sleeve. Is that the only one I've got for this? Maybe. Because I didn't start doing it when I first collected, but obviously you've got the kind of like pinball thing. I don't think Curtain Call 2 is as good as Curtain Call 1, by the way. Don't know what it is, I just don't think it really meets my expectation. Like, I don't like the vibe of it. I think there was so much cooler things you could have done than just the whole pinball type thing. See, like this whole thing, like, it's a cool thing, but it's not very standout. It's just... I don't know, it gives more Las Vegas vibes more than anything. This is gonna sound weird to say, I do not remember ever looking on the inside of this. I might have literally just brought it, put it in the sleeve and just left it. I don't even know if I've looked at the um, limited edition color records yet, but this might be my first time looking at it. But they're nice and orange with a little bit of a marble effect, actually. I mean, it, it, it's pretty cute. Pretty cute. I'm laughing because I don't really know what to say about this album. It's fine. I think I think that's what I can really say about it. Cool colour. As a record, it's pretty fine. Inside of it. Cool, I guess. It, it, it's fine. It's a fine record. Does its job. It's not full album. It's fine. Right, and now we are looking at kind of like limited edition stuff slash like stuff that I don't think people would really have in their collection as much. I think those last three or four albums, they're all like limited edition versions of the albums themselves. And so now I've already told the story about this one. Go and check out my worst records in my collection because this is, I think, the first one I talk about on there. Eminem Infinite is actually a gatefold. Um, this was the first record that I was basically going out of my way to find. And it's when I knew the least about collecting vinyl. Basically, short story is, this is a bootleg. That's all there is to it. Would love to get the actual one, but that's about 1,500 pounds. I ain't doing that. Believe it or not, I do have a limit. This would probably be the latest one that I've actually made a video on, so I'd recommend going and check it out if you want to see the whole thing. It's basically just Eminem, 10th anniversary. It's a different cool cover. I've got some opinions of it. If it didn't have the deluxe songs on this, I would debate if there was any even a reason to get this, but I've got it. It's there. And the next two in that pile are two versions of the Eminem Fortnite thing. Um, usually, as I just kind of went over, I wouldn't get two of the exact same thing. Bit of a difference between these two. I made a YouTube short about it. Basically, you have a gold one, which is here, which is here. Um, which is actually a Spotify limited edition thing. And then you have this one, which was kind of like the regular one that came out, which is basically, it's not actually just a black one. It is actually a multicolored blue and red. I would have probably just got the gold one because that one's more limited, but I had already pre-ordered this by the time they even announced anything or gave any hints that there would be a different version. So I kind of thought this would be the first one. This would be the only one that would come out. I'll just get it. And then suddenly I got an email from Spotify being like, hey, only limited Eminem fans are getting, getting this one, so come and get it. And I'm a sucker, so there you go. 
Now I'm gonna start off with my two picture discs that I've got. These are actually pretty recent additions to the collection. I think I got these in the January um, video I put out. So each month I do a video saying what records I got. So you would have seen these already if you've been sticking around for a while. But if this is your first time, I have got Eminem with Kamikaze. And as you can see, it's got a Kamikaze picture on there of the album basically on a disc. And whilst this one is pretty cool to have, I was actually expecting the full record. That's on me for not reading it properly, but when I first saw this, I genuinely thought it was gonna be like the whole Kamikaze album just on one disc that was a picture disc, which when I got it, I was a bit like, oh, let down a bit, but end of the day, it's a five year anniversary, which is mad to think about that this was five years ago. I think it actually might be closer to six at this point, but that was something that Eminem released to celebrate that fifth anniversary. Now, I don't know if this one was celebrating an anniversary of any sort. I think it was just like a celebration of the tour that they did with Eminem and Rihanna. And I definitely prefer this picture disc over the Kamikaze one. I think like I knew what I was expecting with this one. On one side you get Monster, which is obviously their song. On the other side you get Bad Guy, which I think was just to make up for space. But I do, I think my favorite thing isn't like the picture itself i think it's actually the shape of it because it's got like this kind of like bumpy line to it don't know it's cool and then we're left with these two these two mahusive things i'm gonna start out with the eight mile one if you want to have again i know this video might feel a bit more like i'm saying go check out this one go check out this other video i made but these are really cool releases that they that they actually brought out so these are 20th anniversary editions this is the 20th anniversary for eight mile my biggest problem with them as an album for i'd say about all the good i wish it wasn't just instrumentals i wish there were more like unreleased songs or just like hell even just release it without the instrumentals i'm someone who doesn't care about instrumentals especially on record but anyway that's a whole different topic but when you open this one it's almost a bit more like a bit of a book so obviously when you open it, you're left with the 8 Mile, or you have the map of 8 Mile in Detroit, and this kind of comes with this nice transparent map of it. Then you open it, and then you get Eminem. It is showing scenes from 8 Mile, and then on each side it will have the credit for each one. This feels kind of like... It feels very delicate to open this, I'll be honest. And then there's the back of it. But again, if you want to see the whole thing and everything about it, go and check it and like get my entire thoughts. Oh no! No! Sorry. I have just realized a bit of the front 3D bit has peeled off a little bit there. This, this just goes completely over the top and I think it's just like, it's a must-have collector's item in my opinion. Which is why, even though despite having the 8 Mile soundtrack and how I feel about it as a soundtrack, I still think it was important for me to get this. However, my favourite 20th anniversary has got to be the Eminem show. I think as an album, obviously it outdoes the 8 Mile thing because obviously that's just a soundtrack, you can't really compare the two. But this one, I absolutely love. So if you go through it, again, it's kind of got that book feel where you open it and get imagery and then you get credits of the records. But at the end of this one, gotta be careful because when, even when I first got it, it was already a bit loose. But at the back of this one, what you end up getting is essentially a little booklet that's like stapled into the whole thing. And it's just, it's nothing crazy. It's literally just a picture book. And it basically shows pictures of Eminem during his time basically creating the album, but then leaves you with one of my favorite things, which is basically his entire notepad that he wrote all his lyrics onto. And this is an absolutely special one that I really recommend any Eminem fan gets. And I'm not sure if they're still available, to be honest with you. Probably some people selling them on eBay for ridiculous prices. However, if you did want to get this one, I'm pretty certain recordstore.com have at least got it listed on their website. I'm not sure if it's still in stock, and I think that goes for the same as 8 Mile soundtrack on that. Those, these two big mahusive things, they should still be on there. So if you're still after them, then go there. So everyone, that has been my entire collection of Eminem vinyl records. Anyway, this has already been a really long video. I am not looking forward to when I have to do the whole, my whole collection of vinyls because that's currently winning the poll on my community tab for what video to release at a thousand subscribers because that's what we're on the road to. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you've watched this whole video, you clearly must like something about my channel. Let me know what you've got in your Eminem collection because I'll be interested to hear and compare. Let me know what you've noticed is missing from my collection because I know there's stuff like the re-up I'm missing and even some D12s that I could probably include. And yeah, leave a like if you made it this far. And anyway, I'm going to leave you now. Take care. I've been Ollie Rodriguez Dolman in a bit.